I've spent the last few days digging into aspects of music marketing. I subscribed to the Damien Keys Academy. So a lot of online lessons, a lot of discussions. And for those of us who make niche music, the word at the moment is that it's a good time to be making niche music. Far easier to promote your music if you're not competing with 20,000 other artists who are exactly the same as you. A singer-songwriter is fighting a massive uphill battle. The problem with us is that although we are niche, we're not niche with a label. I can't easily define what the music of Secret Archives of the Vatican or Thousand Yard Prayer is. It contains elements of all kinds of things, but it isn't any of those things. So there were some good exercises in this course, just to get you thinking right. One of them was to think of two acts that are either side of the music you make. Who are the two nearest acts? Also, there was an exercise about asking what music magazine could you see yourself being an appropriate front cover act for? What radio station or radio show could you see yourselves being top of the playlist for? These are good exercises because they get you thinking about where you actually fit. So I've asked the other members of the Secret Archives for their answers on that, but I also ask those questions on our Instagram and Twitter accounts just to see what our regular people that we interact with think. And it's been quite interesting. Some of the social media that our music is on provide quite good data on who's listening, who's watching, who's downloading. So we already had a fair idea that our audience is about two thirds male, one third female. And what has kind of surprised me at first, but I guess it doesn't really when I dig into it, is that a surprising number of people who listen to our music have got backgrounds in progressive rock. On the surface of things, that's odd. We don't make rock music, but I can see why some aspects of what we do, the different time signatures, the complexity, the openness to different sounds and ideas is similar to a lot of what was in progressive rock or is in progressive rock. And the other slight surprise to me over the last couple of years is that where our releases get reviewed seems to be almost exclusively in or on sites to do with Psydub, which is something I would never have thought of. In the last few days, I've asked the questions again and I've asked them of other musicians. So there was some people have gone and had a look at our social media, people who are not previously familiar with us. And once again, some of the things they came back with support ideas I had going around in my mind. So the thing we've observed over the years has been that actually a fair amount of the people who, who react to us, particularly when we've done live stuff, have been people that I don't even have a, a singular word to describe, but the kind of counterculture people, uh, hippies is a wrong word, um, but the, the kind of people who, who go to festivals of the less corporate kind, people who are very, very open to musical influences from different parts of the world. And a key message coming through from all the sources I've looked at is the kind of people who like our stuff are not particularly musically tribal. There's old ravers who are open to listening to some classic progressive rock. There's old prog rockers who are completely open to electronica and certain ends of dance music. There's the whole world music scene. God, I hate that phrase. But the whole world music scene and musicians who once again are open to things from dance culture or from rock culture. And more recently, we've been discovering the kind of Norse neo-folk scene and that has tied up with a little thing that has been in our music right from the start, which is a little element of folkiness and medieval music. We've always liked that. Not the Middle Eastern uh, thing that we've been into totally overlaps with European medieval music. So 
all these different strands have kind of come together and it's all helping create a picture of who our fans are now our fans are not all one person they're not all exactly the same as each other but i think we've got some broad groups being revealed there of the kind of people who are likely to enjoy what we do so the next challenge for us then is how do we reach those people to say look we've got all this music got a vast back catalogue we're constantly producing new stuff we think you'll like it in the old days there were specialist music magazines you could find the appropriate magazine you could perhaps pay for advertising or try and get an interview or a review or whatever it might be that doesn't really happen these days i can't say where our prospective fans go to find their music particularly but things like spotify and youtube and instagram give some opportunities because facebook in particular you can very much target your audience when you pay for adverts and the adverts aren't particularly expensive if i spend 10 pounds or 20 pounds and it puts the adverts in front of people who i know like the broad genres of music that we touch base with then that's money well spent rather than spending thousands of pounds in a magazine where basically you're throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks so i'm at a stage now where for the next few months i've got some ideas brewing I've been chatting with the other members of the secret archives who haven't been that involved for the last couple of years just for various reasons including covid i'm roping them back in to get some more input into the music but i actually have a far better idea now of who i'm aiming the music at i've got a much better idea now of who to target advertising at and i've got a much better idea of, of what we're trying to achieve what we always want is not just streaming or download numbers that is great i'm not objecting to it but that's not the ultimate aim because people can listen once and then never listen again what we want is people who will engage with us who will subscribe to our youtube channel who will follow us on instagram and twitter and facebook and interact with us i think ultimately we want fans who will come on this musical journey with us and then as we dip in and out of different styles of music and different genres rather than being tribally tied to i only listen to this or i only listen to that they'll be interested in us as a musician collective and what we create and where we're going and they want to come on the journey with us i think that is a beautiful thing and i want it to happen so haha <laughs> subscribe follow us and uh come with us on this journey and we'll see where it takes us all